Chris. And I'm Kayla. And welcome to Cult. Or just weird. Uh, we should see say how we did that. We should say welcome back. Ador- I'm welcome back. That everyone yeah. who's listening has listened to our previous two episodes. Right. We definitely have a fan base now with a third whole episode. All of our die hard fans. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, one person. Th- thanks, mom. It's mom. It's yeah. it's it's our moms. Um, so I did the first episode. You did the second episode. You you hosted, and I it was Chris reacts, and then yeah. the second episode was I hosted, and Kayla reacts, and so now we're going back. to... Now we are back to the the first format. Yeah, where I'm going to educate you on something, and I'm good at reacting. You are good at reacting because it doesn't involve doing a whole bunch of research beforehand. Yeah. So yeah. It's really my preferred role. Unfortunately, at some point we're gonna have like we're gonna have to try and like surprise each other with the topics. I feel like, mm. but unfortunately, you already know my topic. I do. Week. Yeah. What we need to do is get like separate lists because we both are going right. off the same list right now. So you know what I want to do next week. Right. And so we might have to we might have to rethink how we do that. But yes, I do know what your topic is going to be. But our listeners don't. They don't. So if we're ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to jump in. I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I've got pages and pages of research here. I don't have I, any cute banter, so just go right into it. You might have some banter. You definitely don't have cute banter. <laughs> <laughs> so for this week, listeners, we wanted to do something a little different. The last two episodes have been about pretty explicitly culty groups. Groups on the more traditional end, the more cult end of the cult or just weird spectrum. Yeah. I mean, we had, you know, Foundation Church of the Millennium. Right. Romph's School of Enlightenment. They had all kinds of, like, eschatological right. mythology and, like, possible sacrifices. And actually, you should just listen to the episode. True. And then, yeah, Romph's School of Enlightenment is pretty far out there. So rather than continuing down that path for our third episode, let's take a sharp right turn and talk about something else. Let's talk about... The city of Irvine. Just a city? The city of Irvine. Okay, but before we like get too far into this, did, did you say you had like ah. a retraction or? Yes. So, a so, correction? So, a correction. So, a rata. So, last week there just uh, there was something that I said on the podcast that was slightly off in terms of a uh, number of years, and it's important. Facts matter. You know, I don't want to do a podcast where I say like, oh, we're really important about facts. And then I just like make some numbers up. So uh, we talked about the age of Homo sapiens right. on this planet. I think I asked that question. You were talking about like, yeah, you said what was happening 35,000 years ago when the alleged Rantha. Rantha was fighting Atlanteans. And I said, oh, that was sounds like the beginning of agriculture. And then you said, oh, how old are humans total? Right. And I was like, a million years? Maybe. And I blindly bought both of those. I know. And probably all of our listeners did too. So no, I'm just kidding. There's, I'm, I'm sure you guys knew. But just in case you didn't, I was off. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. So Homo sapiens, the earliest Homo sapiens sapien skeletons come from Africa around 200,000 years ago, okay. roughly. Okay. Which is... That's pretty far off from a million. Yeah. Sorry about that. And then the 35,000 years ago was not uh, farming. Farming was more around 10,000 years ago. So okay. So what we, was happening 35,000 years we ago? We were still hunting and gathering. So there were there was not two and a half million Lemurian troops battling um, Atlantis? Nope. Definitely okay. not that. That that I know. So yeah. humans are 200,000 years old? Or no. What? Yeah, it, humans yeah. are 200,000 years Modern old. Modern humans. So Homo Modern sapiens. Humans. Yeah. There's older species of Homo, like Homo erectus okay. and, and whatever. But so Homo say us is 200,000 years. And we were not doing agriculture 35,000 years ago. We were hunting and gathering. Yes. Good to know. Yeah. And like I said, facts matter. Right. And where we are wrong about stuff, we will issue attractions like this one. I'm not wrong. I'm not going to be wrong about anything. In yeah, this. I know. I know. That's how you feel. <laughs> I anyway, did. my Irvine research is perfect. So let's get back to it. Why don't we get to, to that? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm, you know, full disclosure, I'm from Orange County, born and raised. Obviously, you mm-hmm. as my husband know this. I grew up 10 or 15 minutes from the city of Irvine. My sister went to college there. Many of my friends were from there or also went to school there. It was kind of... I worked there. You worked there for many years. years. Yeah. (laughs) It has one of the better, like, hangout outdoor malls, especially, like, when you're in high school and can't really do anything except, like, go to the movies um, or eat at P.F. Chang's. But outside of that, uh, it was a fairly unremarkable city when I lived there, not when I yeah. lived in Orange County. I mean, what I remember about it just from working there is it's very cookie cutter. It's, I don't know. Like the, there's the three words I have are beige, cookie cuttery and sleepy. Yeah. I, like there's there's definitely some interesting parts to it. Like uh, my understanding is that there's some you can get some like good Asian food. Like I've definitely I do talk about had that. some of that, you know, thanks to some of my friends. Obviously, I don't know where to find that stuff. But Good Korean barbecue. Uh, supposedly it has really low crime, but like, other than that, it's just like just there. Yeah, it's just it's it's got nice trees and cookie cutter houses. That's kind of all I really remember about it, other than my you know work days. Right. Well, it gets it gets interesting. Let's okay. Say. Now, if you're not from the greater Los Angeles Orange County area. You've maybe never heard of Irvine. Even if you're from Southern California, you may have never been to Irvine because, again, like you said, there's not there's not landmarks. There's not not a destination city. And across the board, it probably sounds a little strange for us to say, "Oh, we're doing a city for our culture just weird episode." Mm-hmm. So I wanted to start by sharing a Reddit thread on r slash Orange County that. Ooh. It feels very demonstrative of why I picked this city as a topic. Okay. It just kind of jumps right to the heart of it. Reddit user new to Atrum asks, apologies new to to Atrum if I have mispronounced that. This person asks, does anyone get a weird vibe from Irvine? Like, I don't know. It's a little too perfect or something. All the regulated houses and regulated foliage and so many roads where it's easy to get lost. Dot, dot, dot. Something just feels dot, dot, dot. Off. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I, I mean, I I do kind of get that vibe when I'm there. Actually, right. there's that reminds me of another thing about Irvine that I do remember, but I, I think you, you'll probably talk about it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to it for now. Got it. Yeah. That, that's all you're saying? That's, oh, well, if I'm going to hold on to it, then I'm not going to talk okay, about it. Okay. So therefore, yes. So if you're from Orange <laughs> County or if you've lived in Orange County, you know exactly what this person is talking about. This like weird vibe that Irvine has. And the replies in this Orange County thread don't disappoint. So let me read you a few of them. Ownage99988 says... Good name. I know. Yes, it's like if a city was designed and lived in by robots. Mary Mm -hmm. Pickaford says, yeah, all the neighborhoods look like that Hollywood suburban street set at Universal Studios. Yeah, it's like Stepford. It is defo Stepford. Uh, User Rev Happy revealed their Urban Dictionary definition for Irvine, which is like, for a while it was the number one, it was the top definition when you searched Irvine in Urban Dictionary. Awesome. Goes like this. Bizarro world. The concept of Big Brother turned into reality. Someone's keeping an eye on you. If your grass is a centimeter too long, you receive a warning, then perhaps get evicted. No property in Irvine you own is truly yours. Snooze Fest. A great population of Starbucks-loving yuppies, home of emo kids and quote-unquote punk kids who'd freak out if they had to live in the neighboring Santa Ana. No culture, no character, don't dare paint your house pink, beige is the official color of Irvine, no approval needed. The whole city is beige, physically and spiritually. Yeah, I, I agree Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z-Z with all that. Z, 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 as in a <laughs> snoring um, sound. Yeah. I mean, I, the thing is, like, I... There's one more. <sighs> okay, but I, I just want to say, like, I don't want to shit on where anybody lives, you know? Like, I feel bad, like, doing, like... I know, but I, like, it's my hometown. I'm right, allowed to. Right, I don't want to be like, your hometown sucks. But, like, I I worked there for many years, so, like, I kind of feel like it's a little bit... My hometown too, and right, and all of this is kind of correct. It, it's yeah, it feels very beige inside and out. Yeah the the last comment that kind of got to me was user Interno says 
Of all the subsets of Orange County, Irvine is the most Stepford wife of all. And that relates back to what you were saying, that there's just this, this Stepford yeah. vibe. And there, and to be clear, there are pretty Stepfordy places in OC. Like, oh, yeah. Like, that's not, that's not a low bar to clear no. for Irvine. No. So, like, yeah. That, that says a lot. Yeah. It's like trying to pick the most Stepfordy of, like, the real housewives. Right. I guess they're not really Stepford wives. They're just hot and crazy. Right. It's a little bit different, but there are Stepford places yeah. in OC. So that should give you listeners a taste as to why, in general, the city of Irvine feels like, you know, something I found worthy as a topic. Uh, I do want to take this moment right now to say, kind of going back to what you were talking about, like with the good food, I'm largely going to be talking about the, like the white people aspects of Irvine. Mm. There's a lot of talk about how Irvine has no culture, Irvine is Stepfordy, there's nothing to do, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's only chain restaurants. And... Yeah, and to a certain degree, that's all hella true, but it's also important to note that Irvine has a large immigrant population, a large Asian and Asian American population, and that has brought wonderful pieces of various cultures to the city. There's, like you said, there's amazing Chinese food and Korean food and Japanese markets and, and you know, all that, everything that goes with that. So when we say that Irvine is weird or there's no culture, we're not... We're not talking about that aspect of it. We mean something else that we're kind of going to suss out throughout this episode. Yeah. You, if you drive around the place, you'd understand, <laughs> like, for five minutes. We should put some pictures up. <laughs> so now that I've given you a taste of some of, you know, the general Irvine weirdness, I want to go ahead and tell a personal story about one of my encounters with Irvine weirdness. I don't, I think I've told you this story, but I'm I not sure. I have no sh- idea I'm not what sure. you're going to say. When I was in my late teens or like early 20s, one of my best friends moved to Irvine so he could go to school at UC Irvine, the college that, you know, much of the city is built around. I would obviously I'd go visit him all the time, hang out his because he was like one of one of my friends that had their own apartment. So it was, you know, got to go hang out there, even if it's in Irvine. You know, there's not really a lot to do there besides like go to P.F. Chang's. So we'd end up just kind of taking a lot of walks because, again, there's nothing really to do and you're generally when you're going on walks you're walking through manicured parks manicured playgrounds manicured grass areas like just very there's a lot of manicuring yeah, yeah the, the asphalt is manicured there one time we were walking through some various park there was probably a starbucks nearby there was definitely a playground and there were also some tables that we sat down at and i i finally noticed something the tables we were sitting at looked exactly like all the other tables I had seen around Irvine, like in shopping centers, at malls, in parks, all looked the same. And so I was kind of like, okay, well, you know, made by the same company, right? They all they all had this the, the same design on top. So you know how outdoor tables often have like like grids of tiny holes? Like it's just like... Yeah. Yeah. They're like the green, like kind of... Right. Weird plastic with the holes. Yeah. Right. Well, the holes on the Irvine outdoor tables form a specific pattern, and it almost kind of looks like a weird spiral. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, I just, okay, all made by the same company. That's kind of weird. But the answer my friend gave me was quite a bit weirder to me. I remarked offhandedly, you know, why do all these tables have the same design? And my friend said, oh, that's the Irvine logo. And I was like, um, the Irvine logo? Yeah, the Irvine logo. Everything has that on it. And that's when it just like, it it clicked for me. Like it was, it was on all these tables. I looked over, it was on the playground equipment. Like Mm -hmm. it was on signs. It was on hedges. It was fucking everywhere. This weird spiral logo. Mm Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking right. about because this is the thing that I was going to mention earlier, the idea that I parked, that I didn't want to oh, right. jump in. So the the other thing that I remember pretty clearly about my time in Irvine is that there's like this spiral logo mm-hmm. that just kind of is everywhere, kind of like Mickey Mouse ears if you're right. at Disney. It's pretty strange. It It's, yeah. I mean, that was... That was my first inkling into there's something weird about this city, weirder than the fact that it's entirely beige. And so I started looking into it, and here we are. What like what other cities have a logo? Like, is is this the only like why does a city have a logo? I guess is my question. I mean, that's the question that we're going to be answering throughout okay. this. All right, I'm glad I asked it. That's that is that question is kind of at the crux of this whole topic. So 
keep that in your mind, listeners. I want to start with just like a little tiny background about Irvine. And this is, this, this is from, a lot of this is from Wikipedia. I have a bunch of other articles that I also researched from, you know, we'll, we'll include them in the show notes. But obviously Wikipedia is the perfect starting point for something like this. So according to Wikipedia, Irvine is a master planned city in Orange County, California. In, Sounds ominous. In the Los Angeles metropolitan area. The Irvine Company started developing the area in the 1960s, and the city was formally incorporated on December 28th, 1971. Okay, wait. So the okay. Irvine Company. Hold your thoughts on the Irvine Company. We will... Is that different than... You said they, the Irvine Company formed it and then the city incorporated, so that's two different things? We will get to that. Okay, sorry. First, we need to start with the words master planned city. Yeah, that definitely sounds ominous. Because, yeah, those words struck me as odd. I'm assuming, and they struck you as odd. I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say they struck our listeners as odd. Because, like, I know there are cities that, like, get, like, there's such thing as urban planners. Like, that's a right. job, and right. I've never heard that term before. Master planned city? Yeah. Yeah. Well... They kind of, you know, those words give me a culty vibe. And I then, you know, I had to, I went down the Wikipedia rabbit hole, clicked that link, found myself, you know, in, you know, Siberia at that point. For all our edifications. Mm, another, that's a big master plan <laughs> yeah. city up there, yeah. Uh, for all our edifications, a master planned city or planned community is any community that was carefully planned from its inception and is typically constructed on previously undeveloped land. This contrasts with settlements that evolve in a more ad hoc fashion. So most most cities, the things that we live in as cities, that we know of as cities, they have, by and large, grown organically. Mm, so you Right, know, like there's a trading post in the river, right. and then some other people come to, like, you know, supply the trading post with food, right. and then some people supply that, and then 100 years later, it's New York. Right, or one, you know, group of people has a settlement there, and then another group comes in and... Mm-hmm ruthlessly murders them all and then is like this is my place and make and then you know f- grows from there like mm-hmm. most cities very organic yeah. grow in a quote-unquote organic manner whereas a planned city is when somebody goes hmm there is a plot of land over there let's build a city my friend mm-hmm. yeah okay that makes sense i think i know uh, which cities are like i think i believe salt lake city is like that salt lake city is a God, planned city i think so oh. i think so uh, i know there's more too but but, you know, there's, like, certain degrees of planning, too. Like, I, I don't know, like, I think maybe it was, like, planned at first, and then sure. after that it was organic. I, you know, I'm kind of maybe out of my depth a little bit here. I don't know. That's fine. We can move on. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's move on so I don't say anything wrong like last week. So, okay, that, the, that whole master plan situation, that probably accounts for a lot of the Irvine weirdness, right? I mean, master plan, that, you know, that would make sense why there's just, like, beigeness and fakeness and, and all this kind of stuff that's giving people a weird vibe. Right. But if you're like me, you're now asking yourself, okay, okay, plan city, who planned it? And the answer to that, my friends, like we mentioned, is not the government, it's not the county, it's not anything like that. The people behind the city of Irvine is none other than the aforementioned Irvine Company. And that logo that you see everywhere in Irvine, that is their company logo. So it's a like a company-owned city? Yeah. Yes. Essentially. That sounds like like a like a weird sort of 1984 yeah. style. Like maybe not that impetus, like this, some like corporate dystopia kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. It just, it, it seems weird across the board. Uh, it, most cities and towns are built organically, become incorporated by the government, but apparently the city of Irvine was planned and executed by a real estate development company and then, like, became a city Yeah, so like, so, so like, okay, so Coca-Cola is a corporation, right? right? And they're, what they want to do is make Coke and sell it to people. What is the right. Irvine company, what's their mission statement well the urban company it's a real estate company okay well and we'll talk more about that but it's it's just the thing that weirds me out here is that the city was built by a real estate development company and then it became then it then it incorporated right right it was built before yeah it was like built before it was this, it's just weird right so Let's go ahead and talk about the Irvine Company and how they came to build what is now, you know, this upscale slash bland community smack in the middle of Orange County. And we're going to start, I want to go ahead and start right at the beginning because 
this was so much fun to research because it goes back very far. Okay. So... Starting in the present, the Irvine Company is an American private company focused on real estate development. It is headquartered in Newport Beach, California, with a large portion of its operations centered in and around Irvine. A so wait, the HQ is not even in Irvine? Yeah. Come on. Uh, a large portion of its operations centered in and around Irvine, a planned city of 250,000 people, mainly designed by the Irvine Company. If you'd asked me to guess the number, the population, I would not have said that that large. You feel it feels smaller to you. Feels smaller to me. I think it actually had like a bit of a population boom. Like I think for a while it hovered around ninety thousand, and then like a lot of folks started moving in. Interesting, because that's why I would have guessed around there. I think the company was founded by the Irvine family and is currently wholly owned by Donald Bren. Since the company is private, its financials are not released to the public. However, Donald Bren is the most wealthy real estate developer in the United States. Valued at $15.2 billion. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. W- the <laughs> Wait, I've never heard of this guy. And he's the most wealthy real estate developer in the country? I know I keep saying this. That's like Facebook money. But hold your horses. O- okay. Because we get into it. Okay. There's a, there's a lot to untangle here. It's it was very it was actually really difficult to structure the research because it was just this like tangled knot of like having to untangle all of the little bits as to why it's weird. Okay. So okay, the Irvine Company eventually grew out of a partnership founded by James Irvine the first, an Irish immigrant, when he, the Flint brothers, and Llewellyn Bixby founded a 185 square mile ranch in 1864. From three adjoining Mexican land grants, so um, we've we, you and I have heard of Mr. Bixby. And okay, like I was Bixby just going to ask if that's Bixby of Bixby Knowles. Yeah. Thing. Okay. So there's there's a lot of it's not even mythology, but a lot of like history in, right. in Southern California is based on these like large land ranch land landowners right, that right. took these Mexican land grants and basically you know, built what is Southern California. So right. James Irvine is one of them. The Flint brothers, who I hadn't heard of. Llewellyn Bixby. There's some other guys. Mr. But... Huntington. Yeah. So for our, for our uh, listeners, in case you don't live in Southern California, <laughs> uh, Bixby Knowles is, like Irvine, is another sort of like small um, township, I guess, city? It's a, na- it's a neighborhood. Neighborhood in, in Southern California. Um, it's, it's sort of near the Long Beach area, which I guess if... You're not from here. It's south of Los Angeles. Right. Bixby Knowles is a neighborhood in the in the larger city of Long Beach, which is just south of Los Angeles. Yeah. And um, fun fact, uh, we actually lived there for some number for of years. quite a while. Actually, while you worked in Irvine. While you worked in Irvine. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, it's a conspiracy. Okay. It's a, it's a cult. You're calling it? It's call, I'm calling it. It's called. The, they've been manipulating me this whole time. This whole time. Mr. Irvine's just going to, like, pop out and... Be like, hey, yeah, ha, ha, gotcha. Got, got him. Uh, I could go into the history of the Irvine family because it is rich and storied, but honestly, it's the least culty aspect of the whole thing. Just okay. go on Wikipedia, guys. Sure. Basically, to summarize, these dudes bought a bunch of land in California, not with the intent to develop it, but instead with the intent to sell it as agricultural land. Because this was, much of Southern California was cows and orchards sure. and farmland. There's still, I can... When you drive around Irvine, there's there's farms there still. Like there's still right. agricultural. Right. Yeah. The part these the, you know these partners and the land went through a lot in this time. But my favorite story is that when the South Pacific Railroad needed to build through Irvine's land for a train route, Irvine refused because he hated one of the magnets of the railroad company, and the railroad company just kind of said fuck it and started building on the land anyway. <laughs> And that's when a bunch of ranch hands with shotguns came out and confronted the building crew. And that is where the story ends. I could not find out what happened after that yeah. other than the the railroad got built. I don't know what happened in that confrontation. Uh, yeah, it seems like that's missing a key component of that story. Listeners, if anyone knows how that shootout went, please email us at oh, culturejustweird at gmail.com and tell us. shootout blue balls right now. I know. I know. So eventually James Irvine died in 1886. Trustees illegally then tried to auction his land off. And so then his son, James Irvine II, incorporated all of his father's land holdings and the Irvine Company was born. Okay. And these land holdings were all, and I I know you probably already said this, but 
all where the current city of Irvine is? Or no? So there is... Irvine Ranch is, like, the big chunk of land that they own. But, like, the Irvine Company owned a lot of other land around Southern California. I think I talk more about specifics later, like, more of the specifics later. Okay, okay. But just as, as of right now, they had a big chunk of land. Then they made the Irvine Company. From the late 1800s all the way up to the 1970s, the Irvine Company used the land for cattle operations and started buying up more and more land around it. So they were just putting we're fast cows. Fast forwarding to the 70s? 1800s all the way up to the 1970s. Okay. Cows. Cows. All right. Cows. I like cows. Fun fact. In 1953, the National Boy Scout, or the National Boy Scout Jamboree was held on Irvine Ranch land. And Jamboree Road, this is an Easter egg for anyone who's lived in Orange County. Oh, yeah. Jamboree Road, which connects Newport Beach to Orange, was built so that people could travel to the Jamboree from the train stations. And now Jamboree Road is like a main thoroughfare yeah. in Irvine. And I had I lived there my whole life. I had no idea why it was called Jamboree. And doing this research, I finally learned why. Now, here's where things start to get master planned. Okay. In 1959, the Irvine Company donated slash sold <laughs> and i say that meaning a portion they they donated slash sold 1500 acres to the university of california system okay. so like i think they donated a thousand acres and sold 500 acres and because the uc system wanted to construct a new university of california what would become university of california irvine mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that that's sense. that's why a city was planned because a college was going to be there and the company went... Really? Huh. We should put a city there. So UCI came first. UCI came first. And, the city, and then the city was the like, city was let's, built around let's do it. it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. The city, like we said, officially incorporated later in 1971. A few years later, the Irvine Company stopped dealing in cattle entirely. And that's where we introduce our potential charismatic leader we mentioned... Donald Wren. Uh huh. So this is the, this is the guy that's still still alive. Oh yeah. Now? Yeah, he's eighty six. Okay, because yeah, in the seventies, right? Okay, wow. So here we go. Okay, tell me about Mr. Bren. Mr. Bren, Mr. Donald Bren. <laughs> I put was here, and I'm like, no, he still is. Uh, he is a successful real estate developer, and he started doing business in Southern California in 1958. And I did the math. Because I knew how old he was now. And I was like, 1958? He was 26 when he started doing his real estate development. Man. And he is a truly like self-made billionaire. Mm. Because he didn't have, he didn't come from wealth. Uh, I think his father was a real estate developer. So he kind of like learned the trade there. Mm. But. So he's not like some other real estate developers <laughs> that get like a million dollar loan from their dad. I did find an article that was literally like, which Donald is the better real estate guy? And Donald <laughs> Bren comes out on top right. every single time. Donald Bren, actually, his first loan was a $10,000 bank loan. And he used that to build his first house in Newport Beach. Wow. Later in 1958, he founded the Bren Company, building homes all around the Orange County area. He then went on to found another company called... The Mission Viejo Company, MVC, and Mission mm. Viejo is another city in Southern California in Orange County. Yeah, pretty close to Irvine, I think. And MVC bought a bunch of land to develop, and then he sold the company for $34 million in 1970. And then in 1972, following a recession, he bought the company back for... And bought Mission Viejo Company? He, yeah, he bought it back for $22 million. Oh, so he sold it for 34 and bought it for 22 Bought it for 22 Oh, mm, man. That's, yeah, that's how you do it. So what I'm saying here is that Donald Bren is an extremely successful, extremely savvy businessman. Yeah. And he's the face behind the city of Irvine as we know it today. He did this by taking the proceeds from MVC. And in 1977, he joined a group of investors to buy out the 146-year-old Irvine company completely. So bought it out from the so, Irvines. Okay, so the Irvine family doesn't own it anymore. Correct. Got it. No, correct. Okay. Bren made sure to buy the most shares of all of the dudes that were involved in this. He walked away with 34.3% and he became the vice chair of the board. But he didn't stop there. Over the next 20 years, he slowly bought more and more shares. So by 1983, he was the majority shareholder. And then I think he was voted like 
the chairman of the board. And by 1996, he bought all outstanding shares and became the sole owner of the Irvine Company. He became the sole owner of a company that quite literally built a city that it can now controls. So this this one dude owns a city by himself. Basically. Uh, okay. The Irvine Company continues to run things in Irvine. And Isn't this the plot of Schitt's Creek? Yeah, basically. Like, if Schitt's Creek was like a massively valuable yeah. place instead yeah. of... Yeah, okay. Oh, right. We should say that like Irvine is hella valuable like there are a bunch of like tech companies there there's a bunch of other big companies there yeah. taco bell has their headquarters there right blizzard entertainment is there a bunch of other video game studios are and, there. and yeah actually thank thanks to blizzard um being there for so long there's like this like little ecosystem of game studios there of, like all these ex-blizzard employees and there's other i think there's other hqs too like i feel like FedEx maybe FedEx might be there. There's there's just there's big and there, I corporations know there's a car company there, there too. Yeah. yeah, so it's very it's like a very popular yeah. um, corporate. It's a wealthy city. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a wealthy city. Yeah. So going back to the Irvine Company, the Irvine Company continues to run things in Irvine, and it continues to develop real estate around the county. In fact, the core holding of the Irvine Company, Irvine Ranch, which I mentioned, makes up one fifth of Orange County. Whoa. But much, much of that is set aside for real estate development and land. And, and so, okay, much of that is set aside for real estate development. And also there's a large part of it that's set aside for land conservation. And in fact, the Irvine, nice. Irvine Ranch has one of the largest preserved areas of land in the country. Oh. And I think at some point, Donald Bren do, like gave that land back to like the actual government. Thanks, Donald. And then there's like all these, there's all this like talk because he's 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 very much a philanthropist as well, mm. and so of course you know that you know that feels philanthropy ish. Yeah, of course, yeah. But then there's a lot of talk of like, well, is this a way for him to like get a tax break? And rah, rah, rah. I oh, don't know. almost certainly right. According to Wikipedia, it is believed that the Irvine Company owns more than 120 million square feet of real estate. The company's holdings include several hotels, marinas, golf courses, 550 office buildings, 125 apartment complexes, which I think amounts to 6,000 apartments, and more than 40 shopping centers. That's just insane numbers for one person to own. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Also, according to Wikipedia, by 2005, OC Weekly, which was a... I mean, it's the OC Weekly. It's a local, local newspaper. Local newspaper, yeah. They wrote that Bren, quote, wields more power than Howard Hughes ever did, probably as much as any man in America over a concentrated region, determining not only how people live and shop, but who governs them. In 2006, the Los Angeles Times wrote, simply put, Orange County looks like Orange County because of the influence of Donald Bren. In an interview in 2011, Bren summarized his real estate investment strategy, Quote, what I learned was that when you hold property over the long term, you're able to create better values and you have something tangible to show for it. Forbes, in its 2015 edition of the 400 Richest Americans, ranked Bren as the wealthiest real estate developer in the U.S. and 30th richest American with an estimated net worth, like we said, of $15.2 billion. I now want to take this moment to ask you, you did answer this question already. Have you ever heard of Donald Bren? No. How have we not heard of Donald Brent? Especially when he's apparently like like governing our lives from his, like atop his, you know, pile of Scrooge McDuck money. Like, you are someone who lived in Orange County for several years, worked in Irvine for I worked, eight. I worked in a building in a company that was essentially owned by him at like some like weird high level. And you had never heard of him. And I had never heard of him. And like I, and I've seen his logo. I've eaten at restaurants there. I've shopped there. Right. I, I've like probably a, a substantial portion of my income has gone directly to this man's <laughs> pockets. Okay. And I'm somebody who grew up, you know, ten minutes from Irvine, and like I only fairly recently began understanding what who Donald the Bren is. Hell? Like I'd heard the I I I had heard the name my whole life because there are lots of things named after him because he's such a philanthropist. He is donating so there's just there's shit named after him. Like the 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 one that 
comes to mind first for me is there's a performing arts center on the UCI campus called the Bren Event Center. Okay. And okay. I just I just assumed that Donald Bren was just some rich guy who gave him money once. Sure, like like some normally yeah. rich, per, you know, some of these only stupid rich instead of filthy rich. Yeah, or... I had no idea that Donald Bren a systematically gained power over the Irvine company which controls and incorporated like it controls an incorporated city in my county and B is one of the wealthiest and therefore most powerful people in the world. Like, yeah, he's the richest real, we've said this before. He's the richest real estate developer in the United States. Like he's number 30 on that Forbes list. He's number, he, he's still number 30. Like I checked for 2018 and 2018, he's number 80 on their billionaires list, which lists all the billionaires. And to be fair, like, Okay, we've talked about how he's been, like, philanthropic. Like, he's been hella charitable. He has all of his philanthropic donations amounts to a billion dollars. Okay. And it's, like, it's mostly been <laughs> in areas like research and education and conservation. And politically, okay. he, he has supported both Republicans and Democrats. Okay. I think he tends to lean a little bit more towards the Republican side, but he's always been a supporter of Dianne Feinstein. Interesting. So... Okay. Yeah, she always has a lot of money. I guess maybe that's part of where it she's comes from. In short, he's not a small deal. No. But for some reason, he does his damnedest to keep as low a profile as possible, even while becoming ultra wealthy and buying up company shares and literally controlling a city via his company so closely that the playground picnic tables have the company logo on them. Yeah. I mean, like like we talked about up top, the city is so weirdly controlled that there are rumors about weird vibes felt in the city. Oh, and don't worry, before we wrap up, I'm going to mention some of like the even weirder rumors about the city that I came across okay. that I couldn't corroborate, Ooh. but just... Weird ass rumors. Can't wait. So Wikipedia has this to say about Donald Bren's quest for privacy. Bren likes to keep a low profile. And as he explains, I'm not a public official. I'm a businessman. I'm a builder. I'm a planner. And if I feel that I've done the job well, that's the satisfaction I get. Not from doing interviews or being more public. OC Weekly described Bren in 2005 as, quote, one of the nation's least public billionaires who guards his privacy jealously. Right. I mean, I know there are definitely, like, rich people that do that. Right? Sure, There's definitely rich sure. people who keep a low profile. It's just, but, like, I, I don't know. This is as, like, the differential between, like, power level and notoriety here yeah. is just way off the charts, yeah, though. Yeah, I know. It's it's weird. And especially because he, like, owns a city, right? It's not like he owns, like, oh, you know, he, he owns the company that makes all the porta-potties. Like, right. It'd be like, okay, no, he I owns the company that. that made the city. But this is like he owns a city where people live and yeah. there's buildings. Like, yeah, it's pretty surprising to not know who that guy is. Here's a fun little tidbit: the Los Angeles Times, in also in 2005, canceled a pending article discussing how the fictional Caleb Nickel of the popular television show The OC was based on Bren, allegedly because the Irvine company threatened to withdraw advertising. The Times denied the allegation and stated that the story was canceled for timing reasons. But come on. I didn't even know they, they had that level of advertising clout. Do they advertise a lot? The Irvine Company? Yeah. I mean, they must. They, I mean, they must. Oh, okay. I mean, sure. Now, because of the Streisand effect, since Donald Bren wants to be private, that ramps up the interest into learning about the sordid details of this 86-year-old billionaire's life. Right. Honestly, there's not... Like, if you really look into his life, there's not necessarily a lot there that feels culty. There's just kind of, you know, a lot of familial drama, if mm. that makes sense. Okay. Um, there are some things that just feel weird for a dude who runs a company that maintains a city with strict rules about appearances in said city. He has seven children from three to five different relationships. In 2010, two of those kids sued their dad for back payment of child support, demanding $400,000 each... <sighs> For each month they were suing for, which totaled $134 million. Oh, my God. Bren said that... Of course, for him, that's like nothing. <laughs> that's you know? Yeah, it's like, like, truly. Holy crap. He said that the personal arrangements he made with their mother, like, he made personal arrangements with her. He had already financially cared for the family. Like, he... Like, whatever verbal agreement he had with this woman, he had fulfilled that. 
And the children and their mother claimed that those arrangements resulted in far less child support than they would have been awarded had they handled the issue in family court. Brent argued that he thought their mother was using protection, but surprised him with two kids who are like four years apart. So like he got surprised twice. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, surprised like, that this feels guy exists. Shady. <laughs> and now he's like, surprise, I have sons. There's just a lot of surprises like yeah. with this guy's life and the, existing. And mo- the mother of these two children said like, no, no, he wanted them. So there's this like, he, sh- he said, she said situation here. Mm. Either way, he won. Because, you know, because he's a billionaire. Right, yeah. You can you can pay a lot of money for a yeah. lawyer. Oh, also, a story came out in 2015 that Donald Bren owns 97% of Manhattan's MetLife building stakes. What? Really? And he's owned it for a while now, but no one knew until 2015. The managing partner, like the people who thought, oh, this is the managing partner, like this is the person who owns it. Yeah. Less than 3% of the stakes. Wow. Like. So like just in Manhattan? Like, yeah. what, so this, so that says to me, what else does he own around the country? Yeah. He could own, because it, it was such, it was a surprise to find out that Donald Bren owned this yeah. building. What else does he own? Yeah. Yeah. He has $15 billion. He can own anything. He probably, he could own us. I don't know. Well, he does own us. Yeah, I guess it's true. Um, I, I worked in his in his city. True. I was part of his cult inadvertently. There's a few more weird family stories out there, but not sure if any of that really amounts to any of the culture, just weird stuff. So let's go back to the city itself. Okay. As mentioned, Irvine is extremely regulated. The mas- yeah. yeah, the master plan city basically built everything up on a grid. All the houses and apartments look basically the same. Like they have very similar architecture, very similar coloring. So much so that there's like lots of local jokes about getting lost in Irvine or Irvine residents like constantly entering the wrong houses, thinking it's theirs. Yeah, it's very like when we say cookie cutter. Yeah, it's 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 not even just like they you know oh this house looks the same. It's like areas look the same right. and th- like just. There's this joke. It's easy to kind of get lost yeah. in the in the sameness. Oh yeah. Oh, and there's there's this joke amongst Irvine locals. It's like, oh, we have sixty two different words for beige. <laughs> it's like Eskimos and snow. Yeah. <laughs> there are legendary rules, like we mentioned from the Reddit post, about keeping your grass a certain length. There are city zoning rules that make it so that like each block basically is laid out the same and looks the same, and that all commercial spaces are clumped together. So then we have all of these commercial spaces that look the same because they are these small outdoor shopping malls that have right. like the same chains, right. chain chain restaurants, chain stores. And that's, I've definitely like, turned into wrong strip right. malls before. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Because it's the Stepford vibe. It's just all... Perfect. Right. I'd be like, oh, I was supposed to turn in this mall, not the one that was up, you know, a thousand yards that looks exactly the same right. further down the street. That so, so I don't understand. So I have a few things that, and maybe Shoot. you're going to address this, but like, why? Like, I, like why? I don't understand why when people decide they're, like, oh, I'm going to make the city. Because everybody, like, it, it feels like this has happened before, right? Like Walt Disney did this with Epcot. Sure. Like, I'm going to make the best city. Nobody's ever thought better than I have right now about how to make cities. And then they like, they always inevitably come up with this, like, yeah, we're going to, it's going to be a regular grid. Like, okay. (laughs) Why though? Like, why is that the best city? I don't know why that's better than, (laughs) than the way organic cities are built. Like, I know that there are, like, there are some criticisms of like, you know, we live in, Los Angeles County, right? Yeah. And there are some criticisms because we don't have, we don't have zoning laws like something like Irvine does. So there can be like a restaurant next to an apartment, next to an auto body shop, next to a school, next to it, like next to a church, next to Mm -hmm. anything can kind of just be anything. Yeah. And so there's criticism of like that not looking nice or that not being an efficient layout. I think that when you start talking about planning your city, you go towards like, efficiency sure especially if you're like a donald bren like businessman you're not necessarily and you're not a city planner i'm hoping he like i'm hoping that the irvine company employed like city planners that like knew what they were doing well see that so that's where i kind of am am questioning right is because like okay so you're saying yeah an organic city is not going to necessarily grow in the way that will be like 
you know, when the second trading post comes into town right. and the tenth trading post comes into town, that's not going to be optimally planned for when it's Los Angeles in the year 2019. Right. So you're going to wind up with a lot of inefficiencies and right. things that make it hard for people and That's contribute to poverty that and things go like that. Diagonal as opposed yeah. to east west. So it's not to me. It's less about that. It's because like that's why you have urban planners, right? So you right. can try to like address some of those things and and also like as technologies come into play and technology changes, you know, it's it may become better to design a city in in different ways, such as like if you know if if there are fewer cars on the road one day, then our cities are going to be like. They're going to have way too many roads in terms right. of like square square footage area. And then it might be worthwhile to design things like super blocks or, or whatever. Sure. So anyway, that all that is to say, like, I understand that. But then, like, why is Irvine so shitty? <laughs> you know, like, what you know what I mean? Just, like, th- I think you're talking about the why does Irvine have no culture issue? Well, it's not just no culture. Like, it is that. But it's also the, like, wh- why am I... If, if this was planned, and as you say, like, you hope that they had someone come in and right. plan it. If it's so planned, then like, why does it, why is it so confusing? Like, why does it feel the same everywhere? Why is it, it doesn't okay. feel efficient. Part of why it, it feels the same everywhere is because there's no, there's no like organic points of interest. There's no yeah. landmarks. There's like, no like neighborhoods. Or, right. Yeah, yeah. Like if you think of Los Angeles with all of its flaws, we have landmarks that are based on things that have been here for fucking ever. Like Olvera Street landmarky like right and that wasn't something somebody planned right yeah the hollywood sign wasn't planned century city wasn't right. planned right you know the santa monica pier wasn't necessarily planned like so and I, those I things get also that. give like flavor right so like irvine doesn't really have that kind of flavor there's nothing to really differentiate the neighborhoods like right again i keep so maybe you know, that's not a city planning issue is kind of what you're saying it's, it's, it's more of like a it's a culture it's a, issue. Yeah, it's a, not an efficiency thing. It's more of like a yeah a culture thing. Like when you, you like when you try to top down right. a a community, you are missing like that key like spiritual piece almost. Right. Yeah. Well, it's I mean we live in LA County like I've said seven hundred times before, and something that I really like about Los Angeles is that there's a lot of like neighborhood pride. Like right. People don't say like I'm from LA. Like they say I'm from Hancock Park, or I live in Miracle Mile, or I live in this neighborhood, that neighborhood. Yeah. And you don't really get something like that in a planned city. I feel like right. because you don't have those neighborhoods that kind of like grow up organically. Those neighborhoods are are kind of the borders are created by like the restaurants that like the family that's been there for forever has built right. up. Or there's like, oh, yeah, you know, from that statue on is Hancock Park or Highland Park or whatever. Mm. You don't get those like, those like almost socialist, like socialistically, democratically created ideas of a neighborhood in a planned city. Right. Because like, no, it's not, it's not a government entity isn't really coming in and saying like, this area is Fairview Heights. This is it's the shopping just, place. It's called Fairview Heights. Right. This is the... Yeah. No, I mean, the the names of our neighborhoods... Oh, the names of the neighborhoods, right. ...are, are organic, and they're right. almost like people up as opposed to government down. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. And, we're, and you don't really have that in a city like Irvine or a planned city. Right. And that's why it feels strange, yeah. And then there's also just the, like, the hella regulation like the hella Mm. like if we never if we never cut our front lawn like we're not really going to get in trouble you know if we well we also don't own our front lawn it's if we had a house we We, could we front on a a big public street if we if we had a house we could paint it pink right wouldn't be an issue right right uh speaking of that I managed to get my hands on one of the many Irvine-based homeowners associations lists of rules. Ooh, homeowners and association. <laughs> First of all, drama time. The damn thing is thirty-six pages long. Oh, Jesus, thirty-six pages <laughs> long for this. Uh, so when that Reddit user joked about like getting evicted if your grass grows too long, yeah, he's not far off. Like, yeah. This many rules and, like, having seen what Irvine looks like, it gives me, like, I'm no longer thinking Stepford. I'm thinking Camazots from Wrinkle in Time. Mm. Like, that's what that's what it makes me think of. Just, like, must conform like this. And that's right. just what it makes me feel. So right. Well, I mean, if it's, yeah, like, if you're a company, you always want to be on brand, right? Right. And 
that's what it sounds like is kind of what happens with Irvine. Is right. that's because it's a company, you have a brand, and you got to stick with that brand. Right. And if you deviate from that brand, then all of a sudden, like, you know, that that corporate headquarters that was going to locate there isn't going to anymore. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's probably a, a big part of why he is a 15 billionaire. Some choice rules from this HOA list are, I'm just going to read you the ones that really stuck out to me. Each owner shall keep his, her garage readily available for parking of permitted vehicles and shall not store any goods or materials therein, nor use any portion of the garage for a workshop or other use if such storage or use would prevent said owner from parking the number of vehicles therein for which said garage was originally designed and constructed. An owner will be granted a 30-day period in which in which to store moving material within their garage in conjunction with moving into their new property. Hell no. (laughs) Storage of vehicles is not permitted on streets. A vehicle will be deemed to be stored when it has not shown substantial movement for any 96-hour period. Okay. How many days is that? I don't even... For the purposes of these rules, quote-unquote substantial movement, involves the removal of the car from the community for at least an eight-hour period, and it's parking in a different parking space. Vehicles that are deemed to be stored on private streets will be subject to towing at the owner's expense. I think 96... How do you... 96 is four days. It's four days. What? You can't park your car on the street for four days? What if it's Christmas? Uh... And how how do you enforce this? Like, Who's looking at your car? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, are there Big brother. are there cameras? Are there drones? That wouldn't surprise me. It's HOA decorations, decor, or other party props are not permitted in any of the pool areas unless homeowner oh has an approved decoration agreement with management and paid a two hundred dollar <laughs> refundable deposit. Homeowner must receive approval from management at least three days in advance, in advance of their event party. So, if you want to have like your kids party pool party you can't hang up like a happy birthday sign unless you pay a 200 hundred dollar deposit pardon me miss pardon me do, <laughs> do you have a fun permit because uh if you don't i'm gonna have to ask you to disperse your fun please oh you want to talk about fun you want to talk about fun holiday lighting may not be installed more than 30 days prior to the holiday or event and must be <laughs> removed within 30 days thereafter how do they define holiday could i just say like Oh no, dude! These are Thanksgiving lights. Actually, they're—I mean, they're, yeah, they're red and green. But well, here's the fix: any lighting that is displayed more than sixty days during any calendar year requires approval by the architectural committee and must Ooh, be installed. Committee. Must be installed and maintained in accordance with the association's architectural guidelines. You're you're saying words, and all I'm hearing is, "Thank God I don't live in Irvine." Thank yeah. God I don't live in Irvine. It just kind of like this. Thirty six pages just kind of goes on and on and on like that. Like if you want to live in Irvine, every move you make is going to be watched like a hawk by this big brother HOA, what? and you Why? will be regulated into there. extreme conforming. I mean, I guess I know because like they there's so many businesses there, and so and it's a it's a safe place. It's safe, it has good pu- it has good, good schools, public schools. Yeah. Maybe you like the more. Um, like, maybe you like the restaurants there. Maybe you like... Right. And if you don't care about, like, conforming to these, like, majorly strict rules. Right. And... Some people some people yeah. do care about their block looking a certain way. Like, I don't care if somebody on my block has an unkempt lawn or paints their house polka dot. That's not something that I worry about. Mm-hmm. But some people do take pride in their block looking a certain way. So right. a city like Irvine is a good place for those kinds of people. Right. And then it's... I guess you're more safe with your home value too like right because that's why homeowner associations do this is because it's not just a place you live it's also an investment right and if somebody does do like unkempt lawn polka dots next door to you then all of a sudden they've depreciated your investment and so that's why homeowner associations exist so i guess i get that sort of like mitigating that risk but these rules are extreme. Like, oh, yeah. To say you can't use your garage for anything but putting your cars in there. Right. Like, that doesn't... That's very intrusive. That's, like... That's inside your home at that point. Yeah. It's it's extremely That's intrusive. regulating what you do inside of your home that you own. Yeah. Yeah. That That's pretty bad. And I, I just... I get bothered by the, like, don't park your car on the street for more than four days. Like, what if the person works from home? Like, I used to work from home, and sometimes my car would be parked on the street for uh, a week. Well, Kayla, if you would just use your garage for what it was supposed to be used uh, for, right. then this wouldn't be a problem. That's true. So it all ties together. God damn it, Irvine. Checkmate. We've talked about how Irvine is weird because it's a master-planned city rather than an organic one. 
i.e. private citizens had to just like had this idea to make a city and that would just eventually exist as part of the local county government that they could control. Like it, it's weird. We can agree on that, right? Mm-hmm. It's weird because the Irvine Company has wide reaching control over the city itself and the county at large. It's weird because the Irvine Company has a sole owner, a reclusive billionaire who systematically bought up shares of the Irvine Company until he became that sole owner. And it's weird because of the extreme rules and regulations folks who live there and visit, like they feel this strange Stepford vibe because of all of those rules. Right. Before we wrap up though, before we get to our question, I want to talk about some of those weirder rumors I mentioned that I came across during my research. Oh, before we go to the unsubstantiated stuff, I have yeah. another question because it, actually what you were just saying reminded me. Shoot. Uh, I, what is the relationship between the Irvine company and the city government? I don't really know. Are they the government? No. Is there a different government? But like there's like a well, shadow corporate government telling city, them what to do? There's the city of Irvine. Like is there a mayor? Is there a mayor of Irvine? And like, is his name Donald? Uh, Donald P. Wagner. The mayor of Irvine since 2016 is Donald P. Wagner. Uh, okay. See, this is what I mean. Like, wh- what is... But there's it's because there's two different things. It's there's... The, yeah. The Irvine company developed the real estate. So it, right. it And it owns large portions of the buildings, of the entertainment. Yeah. It, it owns... The, like, the structures. Okay. But the, like, the city is... It's still a city. It's a city. So, but, like, it feels like they must be, like, heavily involved in the city government, though. Like, like oh, heavily involved. You think that the, the 15 billionaire <laughs> like isn't throwing his weight around a little bit? Right. No, that, that's, yeah. Okay. So he probably, like, owns most of the... Most of the city government, including the clearly a clone of himself that is the mayor. <laughs> well, actually... The first thing I'm going to talk about here, which isn't unsubstantiated, kind of kind of touches on that a little bit. <laughs> about him having a clone? No, 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 not that, not that, but just how how the <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. how the city operates versus the company, like is it the company is it the city? It just Okay. So, okay, so I came across some weird rumors when I was trying to answer, you know, this question of is the city of Irvine a cult or is it just weird? The first thing I'm going to talk about isn't so much a rumor as it is a confirmed and questionable practice. In 2018, multiple news outlets began releasing stories, all with similar headlines, the gist of which came out to be, license plate data collected at Irvine Company malls possibly provided to ICE. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. Mm. So remember how I said that the Irvine Company owns a shit ton of commercial real estate? Yeah. Well, it was revealed in 2018 that much of this real estate, their malls in particular, their 40 malls that they own, utilize license plate readers in their parking lots. And the license plate readers they used are produced by a company called Vigilant Solutions, which partners... Vigilant Solutions? Vigilant Solutions, which... Oh, my God. Which partners with the federal agency, ICE, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. Okay, so it's exactly as dystopian as it sounds. Yeah. Holy, holy shit. Well, the Irvine... Uh, I've... Uh, so wait, was I being like spied on when I was yes. like at the Spectrum Center? Yes. Your license plate was being run. Awesome. The Irvine company responded saying that the data they collect only ever was provided to local law enforcement, not ICE. But come on, like the company that, that yeah. provides them with these license plate readers... Is partnered with ICE, right? Like, right. Big Brother, much like. Right. And they followed up by saying, "If you haven't done anything wrong, then what do you have to worry about?" Like that's the thing. Why? Like, why is this company putting up these license plate readers in the first place? Yeah, yeah. I don't understand that. No thanks to that. So that's a real thing. Cool. So I mean, we do live in a surveillance state. We after do. All so. Moving on. I came across a rumor that I really couldn't find any info on, but I had to share it because I love it. Okay, so now we're in rumor rumor. land. This is total rumor land. Just people on the internet talking. Got it. The first rumor goes like this. While Irvine has one of the lowest crime rates in the U.S., they also have the highest number of dead bodies found buried in backyards. (laughs) I am choosing to believe that. I choose to believe that. As headcanon. I choose to believe. And... I, yeah, couldn't. I tried to find. <clears throat> I tried to find a statistic. Couldn't. 
So oh, man. we'll just have to hold that one in our hearts. Okay. And yeah. last but not least, the... I mean, I, I'm going to just guess it's like 90%, right? I mean... Not 90% of backyards have dead bodies? Yeah, yeah I'm of just course. assuming it's something of like... Course. Yeah, just stands to reason. Last but not least, the craziest story about Irvine I came across goes like oh, this. Oh, that wasn't the craziest. Dead no. bodies. No, 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 okay. no. This next one will blow your socks off. Okay. I'm actually going to trigger warning it. So like... Uh-oh. Trigger warning weird sex stuff and torture? Ooh. And like imprisonment yes, and racism? Mm, that's a that's a spicy combo. Yeah. So this story goes like this. Okay. There's actually a hidden internment camp in Irvine. Holy shit. Where a rich Chinese family keeps about 100 Japanese descendants oh. from the original internment camps. <laughs> they take them out for all kinds of torture and sex sexual gratification, this? kind of like a Marquis de Sade love story. The citizens of Irvine who know about this are so horrified by what is happening, (laughs) but are afraid to tell anyone. So they obsess over the idea of order because it helps distract them from what is really going on. Mm. It was, so it was in another Reddit thread trying to explain like why why Irvine is so like regulated. And this guy's saying, because this, you guys, this fucked up thing is happening. And so everyone just kind of has to be like compartmentalizing because they can't deal (laughs) with this fucked up internment camp situation. Right, right. So that that one um, is, that one's actually is, believe it or not, is substantially harder to swallow than there's dead bodies. (laughs) No, it's it's definitely not true, but it just goes to show (laughs) that like, the Irvine is weird vibe is so strong that it gets people to come up with right. insane stories like right. this it's, just to make yeah. sense of the weirdness. Yeah, it's generating these narratives. Like, what kind of weird place would do that? Yeah. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. Now. But the dead bodies thing. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I, I buy that. It. Yeah. Yeah, we should we should say, like, because Irvine has such, like, a low crime rate, the, like, cops don't really have anything to do. So you get ticketed for, like, jaywalking. Right. You get ticketed for yeah. any fucking thing. Yeah, if, yeah. It's also not yeah. necessarily like the friendliest place for ver- like certain minorities to sure. be because yeah. it's a very it is a, it is a very very white city and in more recent years has become a very Asian Asian American city as well. But if you are not of those two groups, if you are black or brown, it's not the friendliest of places. Right. Unfortunately. Mm. And mm. there's dead bodies in every backyard. Right. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, you know what? You know what Irvine actually reminds me of, um, I, minus the racism, I believe, is um, I don't know if anybody here knows that in Orlando, Florida, there is basically a totally planned city called <laughs> Celebration that exists entirely on Disney property and is basically like. It's almost. It's actually almost the same situation. Like Dis- right. I think Disney just like owns the city the same way the Irvine company does. And if you go there, it's it's a similar. It's it's less so. Like Irvine is more. Um, oh, I've seen this shopping mall. It was a thousand yards ago, and also a thousand yards before that. Celebration is more like like white picket fence, like Truman Show, like everything is just so. Is there Mickey everywhere? And I think they do have Mickey logos. That's creepy. If I'm not mistaken, but I'll have to look that one up. But, but it, it's it's um, it's creepy. It's like an Orlando within Orlando. It's like the Orlando of Orlando. It's, it's very strange. Is it going to be a culture just? I kind of it? feel like we should do an episode on celebration <laughs> now. Yeah, we'll just change this entirely to like weird cities in America. <laughs> the podcast. Well, speaking of, it's actually time for me to ask you the question. Oh boy. Is the city of Irvine a cult or is it just weird? Well, I have my handy dandy um, criteria. Thank God. Here. Uh, These are the same criteria that we use to judge both best friends and the Rampa School of Enlightenment. Criterion number one, expected harm. So this is where... Um, the cult, uh, is, is harmful in some way to its members. Maybe it like cuts them off from family members or it makes them do unhealthy things or whatever. Or maybe it turns them over to local law enforcement agencies. Yeah. I, um, is that harmful to like spy well, on your citizens and, it, and turn them over to the cops? That's harmful. I, so one thing that I'm not sure about with this 
criterion is who are the members of this cult? Would that would we consider the citizens? We're talking of right the now. City? I think we have to talk about it in the way that if you live in Irvine, you are a member of the Irvine cult or just weird group. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, because because we don't really know anything about the Irvine company qua company, right? Other than like it just has a billionaire reclusive owner, right? So I guess it makes sense to talk about the citizens. So I'm gonna say there's a little bit of expected harm because of the surveillance thing, right? Uh, but it, but it's it's tough to say too because as you say, there's also a lot of benefits. It's a balance, right? There's a balance of like you have to have one and a half inch grass and you can't park on the street, right? But then there's also low crime and th- so if you're the type of person but that schools... that doesn't you know want to do anything creative in your garage and is happy to park there, right? But you want nice schools and you want everybody's house on your street right. to look the same. Then it's okay. It's almost so, like if you buy into the the cult or just weird of Irvine, then it's not super. It's harmful. not harmful yeah. to you if you are down. So if you are a willing participant, it's not harmful. Right, and, and it's not like cutting you off from your family. It's not like if I went to, you know, live in Irvine. It's not like they'd be like, okay, well, to live in Irvine, you can't talk to your parents anymore. Like it's not like that. Well, so, it does do the like. Oh, you're gonna make me drive to Irvine. Oh, you want to get you want to <laughs> okay. get dinner in Irvine. It does cut. So, so for those of you that don't live in Southern California, Irvine is pretty far south of Los Angeles. Uh, it's like an hour and a half drive. Yeah. So, and we have some friends that live there, yeah. and it's it's pretty brutal. Um, sorry, say, sorry, oh, friends that live in Irvine. Sorry, we love you so much. <laughs> sorry, the only people that are probably even <laughs> listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> Um, we love you. Uh, so, but anyway, so expected harm, I think is low. Right. Like maybe there's a little bit because of the surveillance and some of the negative aspects, but. You know what we should do at some point? We should bring an Irvinite on Oh, we should. Actually, we should have done that. We should. Let's just cancel this one. And this is where we should have Don't we just call a guest. Don't we just phone a friend? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like, who wants to be a Irvinaire? Who wants to be a Donald Bren billionaire? Yeah. Okay. So expected harm is low. Population of cult. Well, two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, we know the exact population if we're considering it. To and that's hella big. So that's big. So that's it because our criteria is for this one is smaller is more culty because it's like oh you're like a niche group whatever. Right. Is it then, niche or niche? I am not sure. I have no idea. I'm gonna say both, but only because that makes me right on the air. Gotcha. Okay, so then anti factuality. So is there? Yeah. So anti factuality is like it's a closed logical system. Um, what about just like hiding that are facts. things? And I, and I, yeah, and I think hiding things, because we said that about uh, best friends, right? We said there's some anti-factuality going on because they were hiding uh, the things that were part of their past. Right. Um, and so I would say there's some of that going on here, right? There's some like... The whole the whole thing that we didn't know who Donald Brown yeah, we was. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. The like, there's the random logos everywhere and no one's really told why. Like, right. Right. There's like this the sense that you're being watched, but like right. what's going on. So I say there's a little bit of that. You know, it's it's not like your your average. It's not like a, a I don't know RSE around the school of enlightenment where they're talking about a thirty five thousand year old <laughs> warrior spirit or you know the ways science doesn't actually work. Right. So it's not that bad. Um, percentage of life consumed. I don't know. I guess if you live there, then all of it. I mean, maybe that's a maybe that's a lot. I don't know. I mean, well, okay. I, I'll, here, here's what I will say. A lot. So I know people that obviously a bunch of people that live there. Right. And one of the things that's like a little creepy is that when you live in one of these like apartment complex compounds, they they tend to be like pretty self-contained. Like you don't really need to ever leave. Like right. there's like there's a there, Starbucks there. There's a Starbucks there's right a down the corner. There. There's a gym that you can walk across the street to a Whole Foods uh, like there's, so, so there's not a lot of, encar- it's, it's kind of like that weird, like, why would you ever want to leave Irvine? Right. Everything you need is right here. Like you can check out, but you can never leave. Right. So yeah, it doesn't consume your life wholly right. the way, you know, um, like Heaven's Gate or something would. But there's definitely some consumption going on there. There's definitely some like, you don't, you don't need to leave. Right. Stay here. Right. Uh, ritual? <laughs> not, I think not, it's no, pretty no. No, although actually uh, the logo thing. The I logo think, thing, yeah. The logo thing is pretty ritualistic. Yeah. That's like. That's pretty actually large. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, this um, is the fact that you know the logo. You knew the logo when I was right. talking about it. Like, yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's omnipresent. And it's and it's if you look at it as a logo, it's a little creepy. Like, it's a little creepy looking. It's like a weird spiral. Yeah, thing. Yeah, it's it's very like it, again, it it has that corporate dystopia vibe. Yeah, it's not like a Nike swoosh. No, it's like um, it's like a red spiral. Yeah, thing. it's like a red spiral. It's it's weird looking. So I'd say there's a little bit, like, we're kind of, like, hitting a little bit on each of these. And then right. finally, charismatic leader. You know. He's is, not a charismatic leader. He's a yeah, leader. He's but a leader. he's not a charismatic but leader. But charismatic to me implies that you're, like. Actually, okay. Getting people to join you. And okay. Here's the evangelizing. thing. Evangelizing. He is thought of pretty highly. By? But in general, in Orange County. Like, by populate like uh sorry by publications by other companies okay um be, uh, largely because of his like philanthropy that has to do with sure. research and education and conservation and he also has to be he had to be charismatic enough to to engineer to his engineer rise. his rise yeah so he definitely has some yeah, aspects well, but he's the 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 reclusiveness trips me up yeah, and, and, and the a fact lot of that we rise, didn't know who he was. Yeah, and a lot of his rise sounded like it wasn't necessarily like charisma conversion related, mm-hmm. and a lot of it was just like you know making the right business decisions at the right time and right. identifying opportunities and knowing that you can grow something long term and gain more value. Right. So, like charisma doesn't really seem to. He doesn't have a 16 in that in charisma. If you know, like int for sure. Or is 18 the max? Shit, I'm a bad nerd. I don't know. I don't know. For all you D&D nerds out there, I apologize. Anyway, so going so that's our last criterion. So what do you think? They're all fairly low. Yeah. I think that this is pretty clearly cut not a cult. It's just weird. But it's definitely weird. It's hella weird. It's I, not a cult, but it is a yeah. weird fucking thing. I definitely Irvine is weird. Felt like every time I got off the highway to to go into work every morning, it felt like I was kind of like going through this like invisible gate. Yeah. It always felt like I was like, okay, I'm in I'm in Irvine zone now. Yeah. Right. Like it, it almost like there, you know, you could feel yourself passing through that out from the real world and right. then back up. So it, it's weird. It, it is. And and when you're in there, the the sense the loss of sense of place. Yeah. Um, you get really like everything is just kind of conflated and the, yeah, everything's conflated. The rules, all of that make it really weird, but I just, I don't think it's quite a cult though. I think I agree. Yeah. I think it's just weird. Irvine, you weird. Okay. So the first week we had something that was like right 50, 50 almost. Right. Last week was hella culty. Yeah. Uh, this week was definitely weird, but on the less culty end of the spectrum. We have our first official just weird no best friends was also just weird i know but we we did a the the group before best friends was a cult oh, and yeah, then best well, friends was a just weird right so that was kind of like a kind of both it was a double dip in yeah it was the second one i was think they're cult, gonna they're and kind then of this one is there's only weirdness it's only weirdness, there's no yeah. cult origins best friends was kind of a special snowflake though yeah. like that's that yeah, was uh, for sure that was a special one so Okay, yeah. So they're they're just weird, and um, yeah, you're right. That's the first fully officially just weird. Congratulations, city of Irvine. <laughs> you're just weird. You're just fucking weirdos. You're not actually a cult. So awesome. Good well, job. Thank us. you for telling me the story. You're welcome. Thank you for listening, and thank um, you, listeners, for listening. Thank yes. you for continuing on this journey with us. It is so much fun to be learning about these things that we've always had. You know inclinations or inklings about yeah yeah i just i can't believe that i worked there for eight years yeah knew about the logo right knew that it was a strange place knew that it was step for i knew all these things and i had no idea that there was like this like godlike billionaire behind it i had yeah. no idea yeah that's crazy donald bren slide, all right slide into our well, dms yeah th- thanks donald for the i had i got a job there i was <laughs> That was good. Thank you. Thank you. I guess. Don't crush us with your money. <laughs> um, all right. 
Uh, that's it for this week. That's it for this week. Uh, if you would like us, if you would like us to issue any corrections, if you're Donald Bren and you want to yell at us, if you have an idea for a culture just weird topic, please email us at culture just weird at gmail.com. Or you can tweet at us at culture just weird. And we are doing nothing but sitting there staring and waiting for you to talk to us. I'm staring at it right now. Exactly. I'm very lonely. <laughs> Uh, rate, review, subscribe, share. Is that what you're supposed to say? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Send, Find us send wherever you checks with lots of money. <laughs> listen to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. That's right. And I'm Kayla. And I'm Chris. And this has been Cult or Just Weird.